Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it if you've you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Zachary Gio. And this is Collateral Gaming Season 6. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting across the United States, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it. Ed, welcome <laughs> to season six. This is our season premiere, right, Zach? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we now have Discord soundboards that we can play with. So if you hear a sound, you know that's me being dumb. But I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, brother. A new season, and we're starting off with a banger. Cause, Dude. And we'll talk about it. October 20th is right around the corner, bro. Hell yes, man. I know you and I are both stoked for Spider-Man to stoke, stoke, stoke. So stoked, in fact, that we thought it was a perfect time to go ahead and revisit a season one episode. Uh, Zach, you weren't on the podcast at this time, but this was our original season finale, uh, Spider-Man PS4. From the moment uh, Dakota and I started planning the podcast, I think I had I'd planned for that game to be a part of it because I had fallen in love with it. And um, yeah, it's, it's so, so good to revisit this game. I've played through this game like five or six times, and the ending still Same. makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's honestly, it's one of the best story games ever made. Um, when it came out, I was kind of hesitant because honestly, they haven't really nailed Spider-Man video games. It's, there's always been some gimmick that just didn't make it work as work as well. The swinging wasn't smooth. The story wasn't great. The graphics didn't really hit it but spider-man 2018 hit every single mark for me and it kind of stays up there as one of the best video games i've ever played not to mention uh, without a doubt the best superhero game i've ever played no doubt about it hell yeah so yeah this episode we're talking about uh the 2018 spider-man game that came out on playstation 4 playstation 5 uh part two we'll be talking about miles morales which we did do a uh spoiler-free review back when it came out. So we'll also be revisiting that in a sense, but we'll be able to go into story spoilers that we weren't able to before. I don't remember if you... you were, were were you on the Miles episode, Zach, or did I end up having to do that on my own? <laughs> I I don't I don't really remember. Um, <laughs> I might have been on it. I did play it day one when it came out, but it, I, I did. Remember. But there's a part of me that, that thinks that maybe like you just well hold on. Let, I, I'm gonna go look this up right now because you should have been on. I know we were both excited and we were playing it like day one, but um, I know you weren't on our Spider-Man 2018 episode, <laughs> so it'll be really really awesome to actually be able to. Uh, No, I think my first episode with you was like 2020. Right. It was like, it was the Metroid Prime trilogy, actually. Well, we didn't do it. Let's see. Yeah, no, no, we did cover the game in 2018. That's right. It did. It it was a little bit. It was probably like a few months after it had come out. Like we didn't do like it. It wasn't game launch wasn't established even yet. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, this game I actually was super, super stoked for since it's an initial announcement. Um, it might have been at E3 or some other, uh, gaming event. I remember they showed a trailer and Spider-Man has always been my favorite superhero ever since the, uh, uh, Raimi's 2001 Spider-Man movie. I mean, I've, I've just been obsessed. Spider-Man has been my shit. Um, I used to play the, uh, the original, uh, PS1 Nintendo 64 PC game. I played that one on PC. Uh, the, uh, I'm already at full health one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking blast back in the day. I remember I played the Spider-Man 2 movie game, um, which 
honestly had a lot of influence not on not only on this game but the superhero genre as a whole yeah. um, by introducing you know just being able to free roam around Manhattan um, and and uh, realistic web swinging mechanics which made their way here you know and, and is a big focus of this game but I, I I feel like this Spider-Man game pretty much almost invalidates every Spider-Man game that came before it because this is just such a perfect yeah. portrayal of it, it is by hands down my favorite portrayal of Peter Parker Spider-Man um, across any medium like any of the movie Spider-Man I think that Yuri Lewenthal's performance blows uh, Tobey Maguire's Andrew Garfield's and Tom Holland's asses no, it blows their asses. I like. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, dude, I could not agree with you more. Um, Spider Man two thousand one literally lit a fire under my my ass as far as superheroes go. Spider Man has always been my favorite from his ability to just not only take advantage of any situation with his quips, his quick witted nature. Everybody knows that Peter Parker is a genius. He's he's just as smart as it gets not only yeah. with science but with like mental mentally taxing his opponents like he he's he's always been so quicky or quicky he's always been so quippy and quick to respond and it, it's just, i love the playful light-hearted nature of peter parker i love the agility of the superhero i love i've always wanted to experience what web swinging would be like um and dude you're absolutely right um Spider-Man 2018 just kind of dominated. It set a new standard for not just Spider-Man games, but for superhero games. I, I think, you know, Arkham Knight did a really, really good job with the open world. Free roaming uh, objective from point to point. But, I mean, that's just kind of flying around as the Cape Crusader and beating up bad guys. It's got a much darker undertone to it as... With Spider-Man, it's a lot more lighthearted and fun. And sure, there are a lot of dark moments in the story, as we will touch on. But you get it's it's a sense of freedom that has never been established in video games before. It's yeah. you get to basically explore an exact replica of the island of Manhattan with just a few like extra additions, like Oscorp Tower and the Stark Tower, the you know the Avengers, Avengers Tower, Tower and all the, which is super cool. Um, that's like one of the three highest points in the game. I think the Avengers Tower is almost as tall as the Empire State Building. Actually, not. it's taller, I believe. So a little taller, yeah. It, in, in this game's world, the uh, the Avengers Tower is actually the tallest building in the United States, I guess, uh, rather than the Empire State. Which makes sense. I mean, come on, it was built by Tony fucking Stark. Like, <laughs> also, <laughs> the one man of my... has an yeah. ego the size of Manhattan itself. <laughs> no kidding. Rest in peace, Tony. Rest in peace, brother. <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, one of the, my favorite things to do in the original Spider-Man 2 video game was to jump off the Empire State Building and dive to the floor and then swing off right before you hit the ground, um, yep. which thankfully you yep. can do from both Empire State and Avengers Tower in this game. So uh, there, there's just no limit to how much fun you can have just swinging around. They added a useless fast travel mechanic, which has these fun little <laughs> scenes on the subway, but it, it, it feels so pointless because traversal in this game is so good. It's satisfying. Once you get the hang yeah. of swinging too, and you can pull off uh, these maneuvers in the air and get from point A to point B, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be zipping across the map. There's a whole like fluidity to it that was missing from previous entries. There was just so much love and care. I think the developers behind the Spider-Man 2 game actually played this one and were surprised at how fluid this, this was. Um, and I, I know you mentioned the Arkham games earlier, and I definitely feel like a lot of the Arkham games ended up making their way into this one, actually. You know, with with the uh, years going by and how all those games coming out, I remember watching one of the first gameplay trailers and thinking that the stealth actually did remind me quite a bit of the Arkham games, in a good way. I mean, Absolutely. It, yeah. 100%. I mean, when you're playing the Arkham games and you're up on one of those ledges, you have the you have the option to do like perch takedowns where you can like hang and capture your enemies and knock them out. It's the exact same with uh Spider-Man. You have the you can do web strike takedowns. You can do like full-on assaults where you just take down the first bad guy and then beat the shit out of the surrounding bad guys. But you can also play it entirely stealthily and just not get detected at all. You can use gadgets and tricks and techniques and combos to just take them out without ever being noticed. Exactly. It's, it's, 
they perfected the Arkham formula. That's that's my personal opinion is that they took all of the greatest things about the Arkham series and just open world uh it's an RPG or action what would you classify this as? Open world action adventure. Open world action adventure. Dude, it's it they perfected the formula. There's it I wow. I and I mean it may not meet <laughs> certain standards of open worldness as uh uh a lot of games are but i i think you know for a for a superhero game for a spider-man game um it's, it's definitely as, as open as it's ever been um and, and again i mentioned the arkham series because i think that that's where the fluidity came from because like even the old spider-man games you know always kind of felt a little bit rigid and, and spider-man kind of needs that fluidity um that the arkham games added to both you know uh combat and traversal so and i'm glad to see you know those make their way here into spider-man i think i think it's really what I'm, this is gonna sound cliche but this is this is this game's selling point it makes you feel like spider-man uh, it does. It, it, it kind of takes away from the fact that you're actually playing with a controller because it's so immersive. All of the different ways that you can travel around New York City, the things that Peter says to just civilians walking on the streets like, hello, uh-huh. civilians, or something like that. It's, it's hilarious. He's always got something to say, something to do that makes you feel like you're standing there right next to him or that, you know, you are him. It's fantastic. I, I think it's the quips that sold me on his portrayal of, of a Peter because uh, he really has it na- nailed down. And this is a Spider-Man that's been Spider-Man for eight years. So he already has the technology, which he's built on his own, not Stark technology. Um, in a lot of ways, he kind of feels like an older Tom Holland. But this is yep. one that, that's just been, it's been doing his thing for a while. But by himself... And has made you know himself a presence, and I think that that really works for this game. Having an established uh, Spider-Man again, I guess I guess that is kind of another similarity to the Arkham series, and that we already have you know the the superhero that's fully set up. And I think that that works here because we don't need another origin story. Um, and in a lot of ways, this series kind of covers Miles' origin story, actually. <laughs> Yeah, um, because you get you get him receiving his powers in the first game, and at the end of the story, you basically see P- Miles reaching out to Peter, which yeah. that's a hilarious sequence because Peter thinks that Miles is talking to him about puberty. Puberty. And Miles <laughs> is like, nah, fam, I got spider powers. It's a puberty thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. See, I had a thought process, and I uh-huh. wanted to run this by you. Okay. It's just like a small little idea that I had. What if Tom Holland's Spider-Man is the beginning of Yuri Lewinthal's Spider-Man now? Like, Tom Holland had a deep relationship and understanding of Tony Stark, and Tony died, you know? And obviously we've seen Tom Holland's Spider-Man warn Tony Stark, but what if he took that knowledge and that, that, uh, you know, that wisdom that Tony was able to share with him and kind of made his own, made it his own, which is... I mean, the Spider-Man that we see in these games. I don't think they're literally the same one. There's too many contradictions no, 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 for no, no, these no. to be the same universe. But like, not like, not the same universe, but like the same uh, kind of approach to the uh, hero. I see what you're saying. Like, like this could be like th- this is a, ser- uh, a version of Spider-Man that could have a, a, a similar or origin story. Even um, they don't really go a whole lot into the other superheroes, other than acknowledging that they do exist in this game. So. Uh, that that would be interesting and kind of would explain where Peter kind of gets all of his tech from, so to speak. Because we know he's building all of it on his own now, but he's doing it on a uh, on a very very meager budget. They 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 make it clear that he's not making a whole lot working with Doctor Octavius uh, throughout oh, the game's story. For the science. He's doing he's doing it to help, you know, and, and to to help to change the world, which is what makes that betrayal at the end of the game so like you know in the third act so. Uh, hard uh and obviously you know. we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get into that but um you know key takeaways i guess here is that like i just love how uh, not only how much this feels like a spider-man story but how much it feels like a spider-man game like you're actually in the shoes of the web slinger just zipping from opponent to opponent i remember like playing through this game now like i got that um that a uh, hundred hit combo trophy without even trying it just happened naturally during oh, yeah. a, a playthrough because um, because like and this game really teaches you how to kind of 
how to kind of play, you know, to its style and zip around and dodge attacks like Spider-Man. Because the only difference, for instance, with the uh, difficulties is that it increases the enemy's uh, aggression and how much damage they deal. So if you're playing this game the way you're supposed to be playing, it, 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 it's not actually harder. If you're actually dodging all of the attacks, you should have a, a pretty uh, standard experience. So I always play this game on the hardest difficulty now because, you know, it encourages you to play that way and to, you know, again, feel like Spider-Man, you know, just dodging all of those attacks, zipping around. And, and the more uh, skills you unlock, the easier that gets because, you know, once you've unlocked the double finishers and uh, the uh, the one that lets you perfect dodge and instantly take out uh, gun enemies, I mean, combat is just, is just a breeze. It's so much fun. Oh, dude, the fluidity of this game is unreal. You, it, it, it plays in such a way where you really just don't want to stop playing because no. you feel powerful. Every crime, dude. And, and like for me personally, I'm like every time a crime happens, even if I'm almost to the next like story goal or whatever I'm trying to get to, I always turn around and do it because I am the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and I have to. You but feel almost, like you can't say no to it because you you're can't. not doing your job. <laughs> In fact, there's a there's a Jonah podcast that actually uh, uh, chastises you if you miss, uh, I think, one of the kidnapping crimes and you feel bad. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, OK, I will also say I love the portrayal of J. Jonah Jameson in this game, like a crazed psychomaniac that's been <laughs> like thrown out of the news world because of his depravity and he's just got a podcast slamming spider-man every single day it's hilarious (laughs) dude i don't know actually who the voice i need to look this up because it's a crime because he rivals jk simmons in my opinion he 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 is really 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 fucking good and that's hard to do because jk simmons is like the the perfect j jonah jameson live action he really is but they picked a voice actor did you see that (laughs) <laughs> when the lizard comes out of the car yes uh, did you see uh, that <laughs> let's see I'm, I'm i'm looking it up right now to find out who voices him because he's actually phenomenal um but yeah no and like just listening to his podcast like while you're swinging throughout the city i don't know why it's so entertaining listening to him dish his abuse at you i think because they actually write him off as like an alex jones type I mean, he's got his own podcast now. Yeah. He's moved from, from the Bugle. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I think it's really interesting kind of, like, seeing this, like, portrayal. I think the MCU kind of went for, like, a similar thing, too, with their, with their Jonah, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I've, they nailed... I like how they brought J.K. Simmons back for that portrayal. Yes. So, the guy that does the voice in this game is Darren DePaul. Um, apparently Paul is fantastic. Yeah. He's been in uh, destiny Two, uh, battlefront one and two starcraft doom 2016. So, uh, yeah. And it's got some rep under his belt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Stephen O young as Mr. Negative is phenomenal. Uh, actually, I think he's been in the MCU in one role or another, I think in one of the TV series or something, I'm not mistaken. Stephen O young, um, uh, uh, Martin Lee, who who is you know kind of the de facto main villain of the story um, before the big real reveal, which we know is coming because anybody who knows anything about Spider Man knows who Otto Octavius is. So <laughs> it's kind of just cooking throughout the story. I like what like the first time you come in and you see um, you see uh, Otto standing, and they've got kind of the setup that looks like arms behind him. So they, yeah. they keep they keep teasing it throughout the game, and you're waiting for the transformation, and then it happens, and then the game and I it think still I'll, catches you off guard. It still does because the relationship that Peter and Otto build through the story, like right before it happens, especially, really makes it heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, it's you honestly feel like it's a father son relationship. Like Peter literally idolizes Otto and will stand by him through thick and thin, which is why when Pete finds out at the end that Otto knew the whole time, mm-hmm. it crushes him. <laughs> also, the difference between uh, the you knew line whenever he says it to Otto and when he says it to May. Like, listen to the difference in his voice inflection. Because when he says it yeah. to Otto, it's a betrayal. You knew? But when he says it to May at the end... It's just heartbreaking because it's like, oh, she knew and she worried all this time and she never said anything. She just let me do my thing. 
Uh, I'm gonna cry just thinking God, about it, dude. May's death in that game always brings tears to my eyes. Danielle actually watched me play through the story on my most recent playthrough. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I will never say, I will never stop saying how blessed I am to have a fiance, soon to be wife, in less than two months. I know. Um, I'm so excited to be there. <laughs> it's, it's pumped. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, she sat there and watched watched it with me, and when that whole scene happened and Aunt May passed on, she not only mentioned. Uh, how powerful Yuri Lewinthal's performance as Spider-Man is, but she and I were both crying. Yeah. yeah. She was like, it, fuck this game, man. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you, man. It, it, you don't quite expect it because uh, canonically, May doesn't die uh, all that often. I think in the comics, she's died before, but she always comes back. Um, and, and, you know, in most adaptations, she's alive. So this was one of the first, like, mainstream... Um, adaptations of the story where she actually died uh, and then no way home came out and did it too spider-verse mentions of course with the future peter oh, parker that may died God. at one point so um, May's death in no way home destroyed me bro that was even harder because she was actually like young <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. so hot dude marissa tomei mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the may in this game is just so wholesome and sweet um she's running feast or actually i guess she's like second in command uh under martin well, she's but run, once she's running it now yeah she's right once martin leaves um and is you know branded a villain and then that comes to light you know like she's in charge after that point who's in charge of it afterwards do they do they mention that i mean i just played through miles morales not too long ago and i'm like I don't know. I kind of feel like Gloria was in charge or something. Gloria, yeah, Gloria, definitely Gloria. She she so. kind of started taking charge more towards the end, helping a lot of the homeless people around the shelter, and it yeah. kind of felt natural to put it in her hands. Either that or, uh, oh my gosh, Rio wasn't Rio, Rio helping out right before her mayoral campaign? She was, but she's busy, you know, being like a councilwoman, I think, in in Miles, you know, uh, and and running for for the election. Um, and Peter and Miles are obviously too busy with spider stuff. So, yeah, it seems like Gloria is kind of the natural fit. Or, or maybe it's just kind of like a group effort. Everybody's kind of helping run this thing. But but the feast stuff is cool. Um, it's one of the locations you'll come to throughout the story. Uh, again, um, with uh, uh, Martin Lee, he's he's a really compelling villain because he starts as somebody that seems, you know, very wholesome and... and, and um, just a compassionate person who's trying to help out. And there's a part of his identity that is that there's just also this vengeance towards Osborne that's fueling uh, Otto's transformation as well. Um, Which makes sense because I mean, Norman is basically behind the death of Martin Lee's parents. Also, if if uh, JJJ is Alex Jones, then Norman's like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the mayor in this game, which is really surprising, yeah. actually. Um, and uh, yeah, I know he's he's an asshole. You you fucking hate that dude. Um, and it's interesting because Peter obviously has a personal relationship with him due to you know having a, a being best friends with his son. Um, who's not seen in this game, but heard and talked about. And, well, actually, he is seen at the very, very end. Uh, <laughs> and he's going to be a you big have part of the little, next one. You also have his picture in the research stations. Like right. You can see that little that little image of him as he's talking about. His mom's the one that designed most of the research stations, right? Right. And he and he's really wanted to keep, to, him going. to keep him going, yeah, because you know Oscorp is going to cut funding for them. Um, if they don't prove their worth. The, the research stations were a nice little side mission. Um, they were always, you know, just non-combat related activities that you could do around the world that were kind of fun as you're just swinging around. I mean, God, there's just so much to do in the world. There's so much to do. But one thing that this game, I, I'll say, I said it before earlier in this episode, and I'll say it again. One thing this game does on such a spectacular level is that everything that you do in this game feels like it has value. You actually appreciate doing it. You feel like you're contributing to the value of your playthrough by doing it. Nothing feels worthless. Because everything you do either provides you with some form of cosmetic, some form of experience to help grow your skills. It helps grow relationships with characters in the story. I mean, even swinging around fucking catching pigeons is Uh worth your time. Which, (laughs) honestly, I loved that. I loved that side quest because you're literally just chasing birds. And it's, it's fun. Also, you know? Howard is awesome. I love him. Yeah, Howard's pretty dope. Can't, can't uh, complain. Howard was really cool. 
Um, yeah, no, everything. And I think this is one thing that this game does well uh, and why it's so easy to 100% because I remember I did so right away. I mean, when this game came out, I was actually, I, I, I pretty much did everything there was to do in the game. Um, I think I think within weeks of it coming out, and because uh, I, I was just glued and I couldn't stop. But it's because like nothing feels like a chore. All of the side missions are fun, and they you know not only do the crimes happen in real time, but you know you'll just see these various uh, collection items or, or or side quests pop up um, as you go across the map, and and there's a sense of completion and satisfaction as you you know, 100% each district. And you'll find, you know, by the end of your playthrough of the game, you'll probably have mostly cleared out the map organically, which is really, really good. I think one of the only other games that I've seen do 100%ing, you know, this this organically is is the Assassin's Creed series. I think uh, uh, Black Flag does, is another game that does a good job of that. Um, but, but this game really, really uh, nailed it and made everything just feel fun to accomplish. Nothing feels like a chore. Dude, absolutely. It makes me really excited for not only Spider-Man 2, but everything that Insomniac puts out because it actually makes you feel like your money is well spent. When Wolverine oh, yeah. comes out, bro, yeah. <laughs> that shit is going to be nuts. And I know that game better be rated M for Mature. we will be mad if it's not because I'm trying to see violence. I'm trying to shred people apart. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm I, a healthy person. I promise. It's Logan. It needs to be. You know, I, I kind of feel like that there's going to be like a little... Uh, a little cameo in Spider-Man 2. Maybe they'll do like a post credits. Well, they did a post credit scene in this one. So I think the, I, I'm calling it now. post credit scene is going to have Logan. Peter and Logan beat up and setting up the Wolverine game. Because supposedly they're already working on it now that the Spider-Man 2 has gone gold. Dude, oh, gosh. Wait, wait, I thought they've been working on the Wolverine game. I think they were focusing their development on um, uh, Spider-Man 2. But now they're probably moving over from, like, for instance, the design to, like, the, the production phase. You know what I mean? Like, actually building the game. They probably have a team um, of people focusing on the Spider-Man 2 DLC, which we will inevitably get. Fuck you, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, <laughs> For not doing oh, DLC. Oh, uh, my okay, God, uh, bro. Uh, on I the one hate hand, that game so much right now. Oh. <laughs> oh. On the one hand, I'm happy that they're already focusing development on the next game. But on the other hand, yeah, it, it would have been really cool to actually be able to do more. So I'll leave it to the modding community to uh, to explore, you know, like what basically could have been DLC. And they can really go balls to the wall with it. The one thing I want to see is a creative mode. Just just let me explore Hyrule, no enemies, with as many zone zonai parts and unlimited battery and just and just build whatever. That would be fucking amazing. That would be cool. I think there I I actually have a buddy. Uh his name is uh Bill. We're going to call him Bill. Um he, his name's not Bill, but I'm not going to give Bill, his actual. Bill. He's a, Bill. He's, Bill. He's, he's, Bill. He's, <laughs> he's a really good dude, but he's actually a part of like the Nintendo modding community. Oh, He's actually shit. the reason I have Tears of the Kingdom on my PC now. And he and his buddies are working on a mod with custom weapons and custom weapon animations like Link running around with dual knives. And oh, yeah. um, there's there's mods that they've made already. Of He's got like two dungeons. Um, I can't run these mods because my PC is not powerful enough right now. So next year once I upgrade, I'll be able to do them. But... Um, and I'm actually going to go back and play Spider-Man on PC once I get my new computer because the mods for that game are insane. Oh, dude, I'd like to uh, find dude. out what the modding community... I know that they've added suits that aren't in the game. Abs yep, they've added suits, they've added moves, they've added dialogue and story modes, they've added um, <laughs> some more adult things that shouldn't be in the game. Because, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Peter and MJ have some pretty cool chemistry, but... Oh, no, they're God. they're actually adorable. I I love their relationship in this game. Um, she looks different in this new Spider Man Two game that's coming up. It's like her character design is edited just a little bit. It's actually the Either same model, is, and and if you look closely, down. you can tell. But a lot of people were convinced that both uh, Miles and MJ had different face models, and no, they don't. That you can tell they have the same features, but they did they did change their character models quite a bit. And well, I don't know if that's that, just age or just more definition, maybe a combination of both. Well, that and you have this game, which is being focused solely on the PlayStation 5. Spider-Man yeah. 2018 was made for the PlayStation 4, and when they remastered it, they still had those assets that they just kind of made a little bit crisper. Yeah. Um, except for Peter. You know, he was completely reimagined. 
Um, <laughs> That's a controversy we need to touch I, on. <laughs> I still don't understand why they did that, but I'm used to him now, and I, I like him. But um, I did not at first. Yeah, when it first happened, I was disappointed because, I mean, I was used to that face. And actually, one thing he I liked... He looked like a baby! What, one thing I liked about the, the original face is that he actually kind of does look like a mix between Toby, Andrew, and Tom, in a way. And a lot of people on the internet pointed that out. Whereas the new guy just kind of looks like Tom. And he, like you said, he doesn't really... Like, the, the, the original actor, I think his name was John Bubniak... Um, obviously, Yuri Lewenthal's doing the the voice and motion capture performance. It's just who's who's the model that they used for the character's <laughs> face, um, and that was John Bubniak, and it's some like Jordan Jordan Baker or something that's that's doing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm right a fucking child, bro. John Bubniak, if you ever listen to this, I'm so sorry for laughing at your last name, but I heard the word boob and it made me laugh. <laughs> I'm 26 years old. I promise. I'm a full grown adult. I had grown used to that face, so it was definitely weird hearing the same voice and the same expressions uh, make, uh, you know, with a completely different face. But like you, eventually I grew used to it. Um, the one, the biggest complaint is that he does look younger. He doesn't really look... I mean, he just looks like he's he's a guy who's uh, 20, 27, 28. Um, hold on. How old is Peter? It's 15 Did plus 8. So 20, 23, actually. 23. He's oh, 23. Wow. So... Um he, he could believably be 23. It's just the other guy looked his age. This guy looks like a guy who's 23 who looks a little young for his age. <laughs> my, my thing is, I think that the original face model and the original character for Peter Parker did a better job of expressing emotions. I think that I was more invested in his portrayal of Peter Parker than I was this new guy. And yeah, I did get used to it, and I, I'm okay with it now. And I'm excited for the new story that Spider-Man 2's got for us, because it'll be a completely new thing to experience. We've never seen it before. But seeing the same game portrayed twice by two different facial act, two different actors, two different expressions, it just, it kind of, it was weird for me. I, I don't. I, I'm. I'm okay with it now. But Ben, ben I think Jordan, that that's his name. The new guy is yeah, Ben Jordan. Ben Jordan, that's what. Well, it is. he he does a good job, but uh, well, it's the, the original same. Guy. John Bubniak is the uh, original guy. The, the expressions yeah. actually, sh- yeah, the expressions should be the same because Yuri Lewenthal is doing the motion capture performance in both cases, but supposedly. The, the, the reason for the change was that with higher definition graphics on the PS5, um, they wanted a face that fit Yuri Lewenthal's facial structure better to, to deliver those expressions better. Uh, as far as I know, they didn't reshoot anything. The lines sound exactly the same. So um, really, uh, it, it's just a case of one face mapping to the face differently. I'll be honest, I don't think that Ben Jordan looks more like Yuri Lowenthal than uh, than John Bubniak did, honestly. I don't, I, it, the, the explanation does still to this day seem kind of bogus to me. It, it's almost like, Insom- like a lot of people think that maybe Insomniac were pressured to get an actor that looked like Tom Holland or something, but supposedly, according to them, that's not the case. Like There was a whole reason was that the other guy's facial structure mapped Yuri Lowenthal's better um, I don't know, but John Bubniak to me, John Bubniak. I just looked up both of them. John Bubniak looks more like looks him, more doesn't like he? Yuri Lowenthal. Yeah. He does, in my opinion. I, I'm not crazy, right? He actually, to me, looks more like him. Um, I don't know, but again, it's it's a nitpick. He spends most of the time behind the mask anyway. Um, actually, I think that's kind of one of the best things I like about this game is um, how much time it, it does spend as just Peter, right?
some see self-doubt. There's an invitation to be greater. This is your opportunity to prove it. Rated T for Teen. You, you do get... You, you get that superhero experience. You get to fully immerse yourself in how Spider-Man spends his day-to-day and how, you know, you solve the story, you do the problems. But you also get enough background to where it's not too much, but it, it's perfect. It's just right. You get... Yeah. It's like you've got Thanksgiving in front of you, and you get a plate that's good enough to not, like, make you uncomfortably full, but you know what? You're good until tomorrow. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> so, so I guess that's a if that's a good way to put it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I I see what you're saying, uh, and I I agree. I think I think it's just enough. Like I said, you still spend most of the time behind the mask, but um, the game spends a surprising amount of time. Uh, with Peter Parker doing Peter Parker things. And usually, you know, it's just kind of go talk to this person, go do this thing. But there's even uh, a couple segments, at least one in the main story and one of the DLC, where you get to actually wall crawl uh, and use gadgets as Peter stealthily while no one's watching, uh, w- w- which is really cool. Um, and, and really just that balance. I think that this game succeeds as a portrayal of the Peter Parker Spider-Man by accurately showing both parts of his life um, and, and really like the Parker luck. You know, the fact that being Spider-Man actually gets in Peter's way a lot and it, and it, and it, and it causes tension and it makes an issue. I mean, one of the struggles in this game is, is that, you know, he's tried to pay his bills while doing the right thing. And he, <laughs> he's, and he's just trying, trying to survive. It's so relatable. He's trying to survive <laughs> and he's trying to be Spider-Man and he's trying to change the world at Octavius Industries. And, you know, yeah, it, it's like... It, I, I think it's kind of interesting too how like most of the game kind of takes place seamlessly within a, a few days, you know, and then there's like a, a, a time skip of a couple of weeks, and then it's just like it's it, it, it's literally just the span of of a few days where you see through you know the life of Peter Parker and Spider Man and just what he constantly has to juggle. I think that feeling as a crime happens right as you're almost to your objective is is supposed to is supposed to make you feel that way, like oh I got to turn around and do this, you know. Yeah, the the entire story really takes place over like three or four days, doesn't it? But minus, you know, like the like two or three weeks after the bombing uh, at the end of Act One, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. There, there's kind of a time skip, but like as the time that you're playing, it, it it really just takes place over the course of a few days, right? Which is actually really interesting. Like you kind of see, you know, here's here's the first night, uh, and then and then the next day, and it's just kind of this 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 whole like seamless transition. Um, and just various facets of Peter slash Spider-Man's life that are begging his attention. And it all kicking off from him, you know, defeating his then nemesis for eight years, Wilson Fisk. Yep. Which is a really cool way to kick off the whole game. Yeah. You know, him just... And I do like how they didn't have the trope of him breaking out and you having to do it again. Um, I like how he <laughs> stays behind. He's still causing an issue with, like, the construction sites and, like, the Fisk thugs and stuff. But even when they have that massive prison break in the middle of the game, he doesn't get out. Like, I appreciate that. He's behind bars for the rest of the game. Yeah. He's, he's a pain in your ass, but, you know, it's Fisk. <laughs> what do you expect? Even, even the bad term Keep my men you. alive and maybe I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the banter between Peter and and, and uh, Wilson and Fisk are so good, man. Um, just uh, you know, because like, you get this feeling that they've been at each other's throats for eight years. Peter's just never been able to prove wrongdoing. Yeah, like like uh, at, at the end of the game, you know, keep my uh, writing your memoirs. Don't forget the hyphen between spider and man. <laughs> <laughs> Or everything that's wrong with the city. That's funny. I was just about really? to say the same thing to you. <laughs> <laughs> Should we kiss? <laughs> oh, I, dude, I, the banter. So the banter. Good. Like I said, Yuri Lewenthal nails the performance, I think, partially just because he's so good with the quips. Um, they feel like right out of the comic book. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's, it's, it's hard to find anything really wrong with any part of this game. Of course, there were some bugs at the time of launch, but like this game, it feels perfect. It I feels can, like a game that you can just go back and you can just go back to every single time. 
Dude, I've, yeah, again, I've played this game through so many times, and almost every time I've 100%ed the game too because it's, it's just so fluid to do. I will say I've only gone through the DLC twice, though. I've only gone through it once. The, the DLC was good when it came out, The City That Never Sleeps, um, because, I mean, it, it was just more of a good thing, but it was just in, like, little bursts, so you just have kind of, like, these, like, mini sections of the map. Um, and, and it's just more things to clear out and do. And they tried out a few different mission types, which were cool. But I felt like the story just overall didn't have as much impact. Although it does have some interesting implications for what they're doing with Yuri uh, in, the, uh, in the next installment. Because I mean, she's not mentioned at all if in they, Miles. If they kill off Yuri, I will be very, very sad. Well, I think I, she's... I, just, I love Yuri so much. I kind of ship Yuri and Pete. I'm not gonna lie. Well, Sorry. that might be because their their voice actors are actually married in real life. Whoa! What? What? Yeah, Yuri Lewinthal is married to the voice actor of uh, the character Yuri uh, Tara Platt, who is another well known name in the industry. Um, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Edelgard herself also <laughs> from Fire Emblem. Yeah, yeah, they're actually married. So if, if you feel that way, it's because they have genuine chemistry. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I don't think they're going to kill you. I think they're setting her up as Silk. Because, I mean, that, that, that's obviously what they were doing with, I think, at the end of The City That Sleeps, knowing her, her character arc in the comics, which I haven't read the comics, but like I've heard about the Silk thing. So, um, pretty comical. Pretty comical. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh dude i have to start paying back student loans next month i'm not ready i think it's silk no silk is cindy moon who who does yuri become hold on i know she becomes somebody i, I, pro- I probably sounded like a fucking idiot wraith she becomes wraith wraith yes okay i confused silk with wraith you know yeah. I, I don't know very much about either character to be completely honest with you Okay, that makes actually a lot more sense, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, so she's, she's Wraith. So they're, I think they're setting up her, her vigilante, and maybe she and, and Spidey will actually team up a little bit. Um, she'll just be kind of more of like an anti-hero type. That, that's kind of where I see this going, um, which will be good because I'd love to see them team up again. The banter between them throughout the story was phenomenal. Again, because I think the, character, the actors had genuine chemistry. This looks like a job for Spider, Spider Cop. Cop. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Spider Cop. Spider Cop. He surveys the city. A loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. I, I, again, Dude, the way you said Spider Cop was fucking perfect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Oh, Your that favorite was so good. Grizzled but lovable cop. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, like, like their 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 chemistry is on point, and you know, you know that she likes him, but she doesn't like to admit it. But obviously, you yeah. know, they're... she says that she barely tolerates him, but no, nah, she loves them. She uh, she's like they're friends. Oh yeah, I mean, especially once you get to the raft, you know, and and he saves her life, and then she saves his. Also, uh, Sable was the one that uh, really came as, came around and came as a shock when she wanted to save Peter's life. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Silver Sable at the beginning, she just wanted to beat your ass. Wanted you out of the way. And then, and then she's like, you know, you can, you can help me by not dying. Uh, and, and later, when she leaves, uh, I'll miss you in your bizarre witticisms, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then she comes, she comes back pretty nicely in the, the DLC. Yeah, he keeps on trying to high-five her, remember? And she keeps leaving him hanging, and in the end, they actually high-five. So cute. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that final takedown of Hammerhead is like the greatest. I love it. It's, it's pretty satisfying. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved actually. I just wish. I think, I think the DLC story would have been more impactful if, if, it, like, if there was more of it. Like, I don't want to say it should have been its own game because then we wouldn't have gotten Miles and Spider-Man 2. But I don't know. Like, I, I think because it was so like quick, you know. But, but there were some pretty good beats there. I liked what they did with Hammerhead and some of the other... Uh, uh, Silver Sable, Black Cat, obviously. Um, they they tease her in the main game, and then she appears in the first part of the DLC. Uh, and I think at the very end... No, she doesn't show up, but you do find out she's alive. Yeah. I know, I just played through it, too. Um, yeah, Black Cat... I remember when Black Cat... Uh, when the Black Cat DLC dropped, everybody was just immediately started shipping her. They were like, nah, 
forget MJ, Felicia. Because, I mean, that ass in that tight suit. (laughs) But, nah, like, Peter and MJ are honestly, like, so... Uh, relatable in this. They feel like a real couple. I like that that text message conversation that they're having uh, in the uh, into the second act. Fun fact. Uh, Danielle despises Mary Jane in this game. Really? Yeah, because she's a fucking dimwit, dude. She's constantly putting herself in like shitty positions, and she's just trying to help. But she's not really helping, and she's just putting herself in harm's way. Yeah, she can't be worse than Kirsten Dunst's MJ. <laughs> All that bitch was good for was screaming, bro. That's terrible. I oh god. Yeah, she I'm was glad that okay they... in the first movie. Yeah, but worthless in the second and third. I you know, and I I want her and Peter to be together in that universe because that's what Peter wants, and he's really in love with her. And I know that they're supposed to be, but yeah, I mean, just like like she's just she's just not likable. <laughs> In the second and third films, because of you know what what they needed to do to kind of bring drama into the story, um, but the MJ in this one, I, I like her quite a bit actually. Uh, they decided instead of making her an actress, um, she is a reporter, and I don't know if that's maybe because she already tried and failed as an actress, or um, if this, she's always wanted to do the reporting thing. Um, but her and Peter are you know a few months out of a relationship at this point. Which basically, I guess, happened because he didn't trust her enough to go on her own. At the same time, though, like I kind, I kind of agree with you know some of the criticisms you brought up because, like, you know, she keeps on wanting to like getting mad and like wanting to to be more active. But it's like you're not a superhero. She keeps she keeps getting angry that he won't let her do her own thing. Like put but herself her in own danger. Thing constantly puts her in a life or death situation, which Pete has to pull her out of. And then she gets mad at him for pulling her out of it. Like, bitch, do you, please. Do you think, like, it's a, so, it's annoying. It's so annoying. Do you think that, that maybe uh, he, he's acting that way partially also because uh, uh, Gwen Stacy died in this universe? I mean, they don't mention it, but... Did Gwen die Ooh, in this universe? And maybe like that, he's a little extra protective because he's already seen what would happen. That would be cool if they brought that in. That would be cool. Um, I think that's an interesting take. Um, it's possible. Um, but you also have to remember, it seems like that Spider-Man was forever like heavily damaged by that. Because you remember at some point when Andrew said in No Way Home that he stopped pulling his punches. Yeah. He was just so full of hate and rage and this Peter in this universe is still young, like 23 years young. And, like, he's still full of life and happy. And, yes, of course, we've just lost Aunt May. And we'll probably see some heartfelt damage from that in this game. We didn't see too much of it in Miles because Miles was overseas with MJ on a scoop while Miles was taking care of the city, dealing with the underground and all that stuff. Right. But I'm thinking that it's possible, but I don't think Pete is damaged enough for that to have happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I might agree with that. He, he definitely does seem a little bit more carefree. So, and to be fair, they mentioned that he and Harry and MJ have been friends since childhood in this universe. Um, so it, 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 it's almost more similar to like the Raimi universe in that sense. He's known MJ since, since he was a kid. So they, they probably, but they mentioned, I don't think, I think in, in the game's lore, they don't actually get together until uh, after high school, if, if, if I'm re- recalling the lore accurately. Which is still accurate for the Raimi universe, because they don't get together until after both Pete and MJ True. move into the city. You know, um, it's really the end of Spider-Man 1 where she kind of professes her love for Pete, and he can't do it because he is Spider-Man. Right. Right, and and in this one, it's le- it's the it's less of a Sam Raimi did. him simping for her for years situation, and more of a them they were like real, always really close, and then one one di- t- day after high school, they were like, yeah, let's do it, which is cool. Um, and and he, hey, you have blue eyes. I never noticed. <laughs> yeah, I but I love the dynamic b- b- between the two in this game. Um, you know, it, it definitely feels very relatable for a lot of people that have been through relationships, and you know tried to be friends with their exes and that's kind of like the central thing here um and honestly i hope that for like the the majority of the games i mean they have them get together at the end of this game 
I think they should just keep them together. Don't do the whole like breakup drama later. Just leave the characters together yeah. at this point. Maybe even you know uh, get to them being married like in the comics. Uh, that would. I be- don't know, man. I think that I think that Pete's gonna die. I think that Pete is gonna die in this game. I'm calling it, dude. I I I don't want it to happen, but I think that they're gonna kill him off. There are some people that think that uh, like some of the, the footage that we've seen of Peter and Miles fighting Venom together is fake and that My- Peter actually becomes uh, Venom and Miles has to, has to defeat him or something. I, I think that's a stretch. No, I think it's pretty obvious Harry's Venom. But, I mean, it would be cool if they, if they, if they, like, you know, they threw a red airing, I guess, and, you know, made you think it was going to be Harry. But at the same time, like, I feel like I'd be, like, I feel like betrayed if like Peter actually became like a bad guy. I feel like, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they do. If Whatever Pete they do, became, I know they're going to do it if, well. <laughs> well, I, I could see that. I could see Miles having, you having to play as Miles to take down Peter because he's become corrupted by the symbiote. I think we will that get that sets him free. I, because, yeah, I think you're kind of setting him free. Not that he's the villain, but he's been kind of corrupted and you have to Miles play. kicks sense into him before he, he, you know, anything happens, basically. Yeah. Like, before it gets too bad. Dude, I, what's crazy is Harry being Venom in this universe. We've never seen that before, so I'm super fucking pumped. I mean, I'm uh, sure it's happened in a comic series, but I think I've it happened never in seen it in any. One of the cartoons, actually, I think. is, is there's, there's some precedent for it. I think in, like, Ultimate I, Spider-Man or I something. Don't remember that. Um, there, 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 there. One of the cartoons I think does have Harry become Venom, which is interesting, and maybe it's happened in the comics. I don't know, um, but yeah, I think that'll be. I think because they didn't really set up the Eddie Brock character, and they were gonna have to try to set him up and make him Venom in this mo- in this game, and they didn't want to do that, and so it made sense to work with the character that we already had a little bit of history with. Well, we didn't haven't seen Harry really yet. Um, we know enough about him and his relationship with Pete which is good. They're already kind of setting that up. And it works because it allows Harry to become a villain, but not the Green Goblin. Because that is a consistent element, is Harry becoming a villain at some point. Um, I I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see the Green Goblin or the Hobgoblin in this universe. uh, I think we'll see the Green Goblin. I think he'll probably be the main villain of the next one, because they they really were setting that up with, with Norman, especially in this game. Like, when you go into Norman's penthouse, and you see all of the like the prototype mask and the hand grenades. It seems very obvious that they're setting him up the green the green goblin. But I don't I don't think we'll see it till the third game, uh, personally, because I think just exciting to know yeah. that we will get a third game. Maybe Dude, I, oh, they man. pull a reverse and the it, Harry ends up dying, and Norman blames uh, Peter and Miles for that. And so it's Norman getting revenge for his son's death rather than the other way around. That I, 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 I that definitely seems like a possibility to me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to set it up, but I do know that they've actually set up a very deep, close relationship between Harry and Norman, which is cool because you don't really see that much. I mean, you kind of see it at the end of Spider-Man 1, but it's more of a manipulative strategy by Norman to kind of... He doesn't actually give a fuck. He just wants what the goblin wants or a spectacular Spider-Man where Norman straight up, like threw his son under the bus and made the world think he was the green goblin. Um, yeah, now fuck, Damn. fuck, fuck Norman. That's a spoiler. I've never, se- I've never seen spectacular Spider-Man. My bad. <laughs> it's a pretty well known one though. <laughs> I knew it before I watched the series. So, um, maybe I'll cut it out of the episode though. <laughs> You're good, brother. No, you're totally fine. I'm sure a lot of people that actually care have seen it, you know? And it's not that I don't care. I just never took the time to watch many of the cartoons. I watched the the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. Oh, yeah. The 90s one... The 90s one was was the shit, actually. <laughs> it, was, it was really fucking good. But that's the one that kind of traumatized me a little bit because the first thing Spider-Man related I saw was... Spider-Man 2001. So I thought that Toby, or I thought that Spider-Man's webs were always natural. Oh yeah, yeah. That's literally the only iteration of Spider-Man where they're natural. Yeah. Well, and I think they later made it happen for uh, temporarily in the comics, and um, there's been some like other universes uh, that have done that. But yeah, that's that that is definitely a Raimi thing. I think because he thought that him building the web shooters would be too advanced for his age. So they just made him naturally spin the webs. Um, 
And, and, and it brings, well, I mean, they did it for they did it for Garfield Spider Man. He was still in high school. Yeah, I mean Garfield Spider Man. They just went ahead and decided to to let him do it. And and Tom Holland because I mean he had his own web spinners before uh, Tony Stark came in. So, but yeah, and this Spider Man, of course, you know he's a gadget man. I love that they focus on that. That they um, all the gadgets in this game are a lot of fun. Like what were what were some of your favorite gadgets? Um, <laughs> I've always liked the gravity well. Um, I really like lifting them up and then webbing them up against the wall. I the, like the web bombs a lot. I think that's the suspension matrix. The gravity wells from the Miles. suspension matrix. There you go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, you're the good. suspension matrix. I like. I obviously like the electric webs, but my all-time favorite gadget is the fucking trip mines, dude. You, the trip mines, you, yes, dude. The trip mines are hilarious. You could put one on a box. There, there was one takedown in one of the demon, uh, demon warehouses where I shot a trip mine at a box and it caught a demon and the demon just gets flung into the boxes <laughs> and destroys the boxes. Dude, I have that clip on my PS5. I'll send it to you at some point, but it, it's hysterical, bro. Hilarious. I love the trip mine so much. But they're, I mean, they're... also, you know, just they're all the gadgets are fun to play with. They're all good to play with. Yeah, and they're they're practical for both uh, the the trip mines in particular for both stealth and combat because you think of them mainly if, for their advantage in stealth. But uh, what's really funny is you could you could you could just stick a trip mine onto an enemy like mid combat, and just watch them just get flung out of nowhere to the nearest wall or the nearest enemy and knock their skulls <laughs> together. It's hilarious. Or one trick that I picked up from the DLC with the 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 challenge that has you do gadget combinations is the suspension matrix plus trip mine combo. You can lift them in the air and then zip them to the ground immediately for an instant takedown. Um, and yet it might seem like an inefficient use of, of gadgets, but you can build your Spider-Man to be like a gadget replenisher and put on the resupply web uh, uh, suit power and uh, the one that gives you double gadgets with takedowns, and do the one that like does like gadgets and focus, and then you can like make a, like a gadget build. Uh, personally, though, my favorite build I think is the uh, focus generating Spider Man. Once you get two finishers, then you can just clear Same. enemies yep. out two at a time, like quick. But I have a stealth build for stealth situations too, like putting together all the mods and the powers to make like a perfect build for any situation is actually a big part of this game for me. Which is another reason why this Spider-Man game is superior because, yes, you have the freedom to kind of traverse New York and just beat the shit out of criminals, but you can customize it and do it the way you are comfortable with doing it. You don't have to conform to somebody else's style of play. You have your, you can have your own. And I, I just think that's what makes this game one of the best. It just makes it, it's, it's got so much replayability. Without a doubt, it is one of the most replayable video games I've ever played. Um, and oh, it's yeah. just it's it's an all around good time. If for some reason you are listening to this and you have not played the game, sorry for the spoilers. Go fucking play it. You're missing out. The game is a masterpiece. Played it on day one, and I was actually really bummed that I couldn't play the remaster when it came out. But now that I've got it, I'm probably going to get off this podcast and go play Spider Man. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll sort of get into our final thoughts here. I know we're, we're hitting it up on an hour, and there's still so much I feel like we probably haven't talked about. But Oh, um, dude. We, <laughs> we, we still got a part two that we can dive into. You know? We still have part two uh, where we're going to be focusing uh, chiefly on Miles Morales, but um, we, we can definitely talk about like the series as a whole. And uh, we also have a whole other episode on this. On this, I haven't even listened to it to hear like how much of it like I've, we've repeated in this episode because it, it was years ago. But uh, if you want to hear an earlier take on uh, my and uh, Dakota's opinions, we also had a uh, uh, Robert chilling on that episode as well because he's a big Spider-Man geek. Um, go check that episode out, and also don't judge me too harshly because it was a season one episode. <laughs> Don't judge I'll judge you harshly. pretty harshly. I'm going to go back and listen to it and judge you. I'm going to write like <laughs> plot points for you, Ash. There you go. I, I it'll actually, it'd probably be interesting to, th- to to hear like how many things we just like organically like came like said the same thing again. I mean, I know I talked about how the game makes you feel like Spider Man. Yeah, I, I I mean, sort sort of getting into our our, our, our final thoughts here. Um, I, I I definitely do 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 
definitely feel like this is like the these are the definitive Spider-Man games. Uh, this game, Miles, and it looks to be Spider-Man Two, is just gonna completely like outshine them in every way. And I'm I'm really 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 excited. Um, that that may be you know other than Zelda, my my most anticipated game this year. Yeah. Um, final thoughts, man. I I think that this game. Uh, kind of hit home for me when I was in college and gave me something to look forward to every single day when I came home. College was rough. Um, one of the best games I've ever played, hands down. One of the most replayable games I've ever tackled. And it is the definitive Spider-Man game. Um, definitely go play it. Even if you've already beaten it, go play it again. You know you'll have fun just swinging around New York. It's a great time. Um, if you want to just relax and swing around New York... It's the perfect game. If you want combat, it's the perfect game. If you want to do all of that and then some, it's the perfect game. So I'm very excited for October 20th. I know that Ash and I will be dialing each other up like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Let's go. (laughs) Well, and we'll both probably download it digitally, but it's going to be a great time. Yeah, I have yet to pre-order it because I, I want to get like the whole deluxe edition and everything. So um, I, I'm waiting to shell out some money on that. But yeah, I, I will have it day one. Super, super, super stoked. Um, Spider-Man PS4 is, is, is easily in like my top 10, if not top five fav- favorite video games of all time. And if uh, Spider-Man 2 has anything to uh, improve on its predecessor, ooh, can't even imagine... Um, this game is also, will. you know, they will extremely polished. Um, I will say, and I, I forgot to mention this earlier. I have had some issues in the remastered version in particular on PS five. I don't know. It doesn't feel like when I played the game originally, it was this buggy, but I have experienced quite a few bugs, uh, on this most recent playthrough, which took away from the experience a little bit because my, my, the way I recalled this game was being like incredibly polished and it still is. But, like, yeah, I, I, I did notice that. I don't know if that's just me or... I mean, no, nah, it's not just you. Okay. Um, there, I saw quite a few bugs when I played, but I didn't really care. You know, they kind of made... They, it's such a they phenomenal it game. It's, you can just overlook it, yeah. <laughs> well, that, and you just can't... You see, you see them happen, and you're like, well, that, it, it kind of grounds you a little bit and reminds you that you're playing a game because these games are so immersive and they're so well done. So, yeah. Oh, one last thing. What did you think about the Miles and MJ missions? I know you hated the mini games. Talking about like the stealth shit? Yeah. I liked them the first time. And to be honest, the Miles ones didn't really bother me so much because yeah, the, the very first Well, the hacking stuff is interesting, but it's also intense because you just witnessed a tragedy right. for Miles. Like you literally witnessed the death of his father. And he's literally, you're climbing, you're doing, you're using him, avoiding the demons, trying to find your mom. You're trying to find anybody that's left. And so it's intense. And But the MJ missions and the subsequent Miles missions after that, it, it, it was repetitive and kind of boring. Um, the one where you're avoiding the rhino is fun. Uh, well, okay, so I'll reiterate. I don't like the MJ missions. I like the Miles missions. The Miles missions actually feel like they have value and they're intense. The MJ ones kind of feel repetitive and kind of dumb. Other than the last two, I think, the the last two MJ missions, the one in Grand Central Terminal where you can actually have Spidey take out enemies and the one in uh, uh, Osborne's penthouse where you can actually taser the enemies actually really helps. Um, and, And the ability to lure the enemies in the Sable camp actually helped a little bit too, but whenever you can do both, uh, luring and taking out enemies, that really helped. Um, as for the Miles missions, I agree though those those were better. Um, just I, I never minded the Miles and MJ missions personally. I know everybody hated on them. I, I've always just thought that they were pretty okay for for stealth segments. Again, the Miles ones are actually a lot more fun, and the latter two MJ ones um, are, are are a lot more fun too. But I, I think like if they wanted to include them, um, I have half a mind that they might just uh, just take them out because of the complaints but if they wanted to include them i could see like if they just wanted to make like those like like make mj missions literally just side quests and that way you could do them whenever you want to i I think that would be a nice like middle ground but then the other part of me is like yeah they'll probably just drop them i mean the the mini games they added a skip option to in the remastered version because everybody hated those so (laughs) i guess good if they like had an explanation where like pete 
teaches MJ how to use his gadgets, and so she's got them on hand. Yeah. And so she can, like, throw web bombs or, like, suspension cool. matrixes and trip mines. That would be that would be interesting, you know? And she's got, like, a finite amount, so you have to be very precise and strategic on how you use them. Same thing. Well, Miles is Spider-Man now, so he's out of the question. But... It's that that would be a really good way for them to do it. It would be more effective and it would make more sense instead of just trying to be stealthy. Because why the fuck when she's as close as she is to Peter, why would she have to go into any scenario like that without some way to defend herself? You know, I just I I never liked that. Yeah, right. Like there's no reason like she couldn't just at least wait for him to get there for backup. Like, I, I feel like if, if we had more missions where, like, it was a tag team thing where, like, you could call Spidey in to take out the enemies, like, that was kind of cool in that section getting to see, like, him stealth his way through. Like, I, I feel like that would be honestly the perfect way to do those missions. Make them side quests and make them to where, like, you know, like, MJ does, like, the initial infiltration and, um, and like, you, you just hurt, she, like, directs Spidey to, like, to take out some enemies and then you, like, switch to Spidey and stealth the rest of them out or something. Um I don't know. Just just throwing ideas out here. I know, like it was just another thing. I feel like I, I really wanted to touch on was was those missions and, and the mini games, which I like, but I know you don't like. <laughs> they're they're not terrible. They're not they, okay. They could be better. Like the spectrograph and the 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 typical like like fuse puzzle, which we've well, seen. Well, they're in, fun. Like... They're fun until you have to like do a bunch of them back to back to back. Like you, I, I do them all so that I can get the tokens and the experience. Right. But now you can but skip them. I'm not them. having a great time. <laughs> yeah, you can skip them now. But you, I still want that experience. You know, every little bit counts. I got to level fifty on my most recent playthrough, though, so that that made me feel good. <laughs> oh yeah, you. you uh, th- I think that's that's the cap out, right? Yep, level fifty is the cap. I mean, you can still kind of level up and increase. And you just get stat health. increases. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Perfect game. Go play it. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, uh, when this game came out, like it was, it was like a ten out of ten game for me. Like I was, I was just absolutely in love. Um, Miles, if anything, is is a little bit more of a polished experience, if shorter. Um, we will be covering that in the next part uh, as we uh, build up our hype for Spider Man Two. Um, October is actually our spooky month, so we'll be actually focusing on horror games. Uh, so we'll be doing Dino Crisis and Resident Evil Three. Our Halloween special is going to be Silent Hill 4. Um, also, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage comes out this month, so I'd like to cover that. Um, as for Spider-Man 2, since it's coming out towards the end of October anyway, we're actually going to be devoting the month of November to that game. So we'll do what we've done in the past with like the, the really big games that we want to fully go into. And part one will be our spoiler-free take, and then part two, which will be roughly a month after the game has come out, will be our full spoiler thoughts on the experience. And then uh, we'll be moving into d- December uh, as we cover Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons uh, and uh, The Grinch for our, hol- our uh, holiday special. Yeah, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. It's a fun game. So that, that, that's, that's Collateral Cinema Season 6 up to the end of the year. Um, also, Collateral Gaming. Collateral, collateral Gaming, yes. See, I do two podcasts. <laughs> I'm, keep, I'm leaving that in. We uh, also... Uh, we are going to do a year in review episode, either uh, the thirty first or the first. I'd love to do that, like right around New Year's, and just cover all of the games that we didn't get to that we I, I would have liked to have done, like game launch reviews on that came out in twenty twenty three. So that would include uh, Mortal Kombat one because I'm cutting that out this month. Just I don't have the money for it. We haven't gotten around to it. Um, for like Street Fighter VI, for a lot of games that came out this year, uh, Pikmin Four. Like I kind of want to pick up a lot of games and um, just kind of like do like a like a year in review thing here. Just so we- Dead Space. That was another one I really would have loved to cover, but I didn't have a PS5 at the time. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy, because um, despite JKR being a turf, I-, I-, I am in love with the Harry Potter story and the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I think we're bullshitting at this point. Um, you can find oh, yeah. collateral, collateral gaming uh, at the links in the uh, in the in the description um, or in, in the show notes, I should say. Uh, and you can uh, also check us out on social media. Join our Facebook group, Collateral Media Podcasts, and get in on the shit posting and fun. Um, uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram or I guess X, or if it becomes some sort of like 
pay, <laughs> paid thing, then uh, <laughs> we're, we're probably not going to do that. Um, fuck Elon Musk, by the way. Uh, imagine, okay, so imagine like you, uh, the word tweet is in the dictionary, okay? The word tweet is in the dictionary. They're now called posts. Imagine getting rid of that level of brand recognition over a midlife crisis. Yeah. To be to be honest, when Elon started changing all this stuff, my first thought was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're also on threads, although I haven't fucked with it too much. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, go follow us on social media. Check us out on Patreon as well. Um, at some point, I, I've always said I really wanted to do a Spider-Man um, Let's Play. Uh, that, oh, yeah, dude. Like, I, I really, really, really want to at some point. So, But we do have other Let's Plays out. Um, and as soon as I get like a setup and I have a new game card and a capture card and everything, I'll, I'll start recording new exclusive commentaries uh, for our patrons. Um, by the way, uh, <laughs> uh, Patreon actually saved my life a little bit. So <laughs> uh, there, I, I, I had a half paycheck because I submitted my timesheet late, and I happened to have uh, money to pull out from uh, Patreon, which was really, really nice. So uh, I cool. appreciate it. <laughs> it was just like it was just like eleven or twelve dollars, but it, it actually saved my life. <laughs> hey, man. Because sometimes, uh, yeah. you, sometimes you just got to look at it. Nice car. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, folks. Oh, dude. <laughs> so, I as think, always, uh, just thanks, guys, for listening thank seriously. You. So thank much you. for just <laughs> for tuning in. Spider-Man is always fun to talk about. And to be honest, it's I've been looking forward to recording this episode. It's, it's a good time. You know. Fuck, fucking A, man. Well, we'll we'll see you in part two. Until then, I've been Ashley Chancellor. I've been Zachary Gio. And this is Collateral Gaming Season Premiere Part One. Signing off. <laughs>